Uh, sorry about that. So let us start uh, with the first topic that is post-refractive uh, surgery IOL power calculation. I am a consultant to Kalsai's Meditech. So the number of uh, refractive surgeries being performed world over have uh, been increasing. And also we are seeing an increased number of post-refractive uh, patients uh, presenting with age-related cataract. Uh, I myself, I've been doing refractive surgery for over 25 years now. And so I get to see a lot of my patients uh, whom I have operated for LASIK uh, coming back to me for uh, cataract surgery. And we all know that uh, refractive surges, uh, sub refractive surprises are quite common uh, uh, after uh, uh, cataract surgery in such patients. And uh, this leads to patient dis dissatisfaction. So accurate biometry is the key to ensure uh, best visual outcomes. So what is the problem post-refractive surgery? How does it differ from uh, regular biometry? Basically, all of you all know that there is a relationship between the anterior and posterior corneal curvature. And this uh, ratio is known as the Gullstrand's ratio. And it is uh, uh, fixed at around 0 0.9, 0 0.92. Uh, but after corneal refractive surgery, you're changing the shape of the cornea and also the thickness of the cornea. So what happens is, uh, like you can see here in myopic LASIK, the central area is flattened. Whereas hyperopic uh, LASIK, the uh, central um, curvature is steepened, either with uh, LASIK, smile, or PRK, any corneal surgery. So there is a change in the Gullstrand's ratio. And when there is a change in the Gullstrand's ratio, uh, most of the normal formulae, they take this fixed ratio, they assume a fixed ratio. And uh, this uh, posterior curvature uh, uh, power is compensated by changing the corneal refractive index in the formulae. So when this Gullstrand ratio is uh, altered, then you can have errors in biometry. Uh, if you look at conventional uh, keratometers, the corneal power is calculated in the 3 mm zone. Average can be 2.8 to 3.7. And uh, with the assumption of uh, uh, fixed anterior to posterior co corneal uh, curvature uh, ratio, which is the Gullstrand's ratio. And uh, the central part of the cornea is not imaged. And as you, you all know that after refractive surgery, whether it's myopic or hyperopic corneal refractive surgery, the central area uh, curvature is changed maximally. And the rate of change of slope from the center to the periphery is altered. This um, normal relationship is altered. So this is also one of the issues. So what happens when you use uh, third generation formulas? The other problem is uh, that uh, when you use a formula like uh, Hoffer Q, Holiday One or SRKT, uh, the keratometric reading and the axial length are taken into uh, consideration for uh, uh, the uh, anterior chamber deck. But uh, when the keratometric reading is altered because of refractive surgery, then you get an inaccurate uh, anterior chamber depth. And this basically causes an inaccurate correct, uh, calculation of the effective lens position. And this also gives rise to errors in the biometry. So these are all the problems as to why you can have biometry errors uh, post-refractive surgery. Now the solution is uh, you can overcome this uh, by measuring the or estimating the true corneal power. So you can measure it objectively or you can apply correction factors for the keratometry to get the true corneal power so that you are not dependent on the fixed ratio, Gullstrand's ratio. So using, otherwise you will have to use formulae which are not solely relying on keratometry and axial length, or you can add in correction factors for accurate uh, estimation of the effective lens position. So measuring or estimating the true corneal power, you can objectively do, do it using the total keratometry or TK. This is available with the IUL Master 700, which is a swept source OCT. The other uh, uh, correction factor is that you can apply correction factor 
for keratometry using the pentacam EKR values. Now coming to uh, using formula which uh, are not solely relying on keratometry and axial length or uh, those that use correction factors for accurate estimation of ELP, they are the Holiday 2 and the Barrett True K uh, Universal 2 formula. So the conventional approach is uh, look for the pre-op refractive data before the patient underwent refractive surgery if you have the K readings and the refraction, that's the history method. You can also use the online calculators for uh, this. And it is uh, prudent to compare various methods uh, uh, and see the, uh, look at the values uh, for the IULs uh, after the online calculators, and then you can take a decision. Uh, so you have the history versus the no history methods. So if you look at this, uh, this is an online uh, a formula where you put in all the data. Uh, if you have uh, access to uh, OCT, then you can put in the net corneal power, post corneal power, central corneal thickness, um, and also K1, K2, uh, axial length, etc. And uh, you have IL uh, calculation formulas for post-refractive surgery. You can visit the ASCRS uh, uh, website where they have uh, post-refractive surgery formulae and uh, you have the double K, Holiday 1, Shamas, Hagis, L, uh, then OCT-based formulae, Barrett True K uh, formulae. So uh, basically they can be classified as using uh, prior data or without using any other prior data where you put in the uh, details. So in our hospital, we, we undertook a study uh, to evaluate and compare the performance of uh, three formulae, uh, which are uh, now currently being used and are popular. One is the um, TK with uh, Barrett's Universal 2, uh, and uh, the other was the Pentacam EKR with the Holiday 2, and then the Barrett True K post-refractive surgery formulas for post-refractive uh, surgery eyes. So if you use the holiday equivalent uh, keratometric uh, uh, detailed report or what is known as the EKR with the pentacan, you'll have to select the 4.5 mm zone and use the values in this 4.5 mm zone and then apply the uh, holiday uh, to uh, formulae. It also gives you the distribution of EKR and then uh, this graph is very important because it kind of indicates the centration of the ablation. And if you get a nice uh, Gaussian curve, that means it's uh, well-centered and the distribution of Ks are uniform and the cornea is not very regular. So that information also you can get from this. So uh, 4.5 mm, you use the holiday too. And uh, there is uh, there are several publications on this uh, that using the 4.5 5 mm EKR plus holiday two is uh, fairly accurate for uh, calculating uh, IUL power for post-refractive surgery patients. The other uh, formula we used was the total keratometry or uh, TK. So this is a novel method uh, combining uh, telecentric keratometry and swept source OCT. Uh, this is available in the IUL Master 700 uh, where you can actually measure the postrocorneal curvature and uh, it also has the uh, inbuilt uh, Barrett TK Universal 2 and uh, Barrett TK Toric formulae. So let us see how uh, this works. Basically, the total keratometry, the IOL Master 700, uses telecentric three zone uh, keratometry. And um, you get the uh, Toric uh, model of the anterior surface of the cornea. The swept source OCT uh, B scans give you the uh, corneal thickness at various points, and it gives you the intracorneal distances between the anterior and posterior curvature. From this, um, the posterior 3D points are uh, calculated so as to get a posterior torus uh, fit of the, the posterior curvature of the cornea. And then a uh, uh, calibration is applied to actually get the uh, uh, posterior corneal uh, surface values. 
And then uh, this is uh, incorporated to uh, power matrices and the thick lens formula. And uh, you get the uh, biometry, the TK values, total characteristic values. So this was a retrospective study and we um, had 30 eyes from 18 patients aged uh, around 56 years and history of any form of corneal uh, refractive procedure presenting with age-related cataract undergoing FACO by a single experienced surgeon. Uh, five eyes were excluded due to serious ocular conditions. Uh, so pre-op, the axial length, keratometric power and ACD were measured by the IOL Master 700 and topography uh, using the Pentacam HR to get the EKR values. The power of the implanted lens, we used only one type of lens, um, the Technis one, because you can have a little variation in the EPL if you use different models of lenses. Um, this was determined using the three uh, formulae, the Barrett uh, True K post refractive surgery formulae, uh, EKR uh, plus Holiday 2, and the TK plus uh, Barrett Universal 2 uh, <clears throat> with the IOL master software. The IOL constant was taken from ULIB and the IOL power was calculating uh, use, using the Barrett True K post refractive surgery formula. So coming to the results, uh, okay, these are the eyes and most of them were post myopic LASIK, but we also had post hyperopic LASIK, post RK, post relax smile, post press beyond and post PRK. Okay. This, um, uh, these are the results. Uh, we looked at the prediction of mean absolute error, which is uh, MAE. And the post-op refractive errors two months after cataract surgery ranged from minus 0 0.75 to plus 0 0.50, which is a very good result. And uh, the mean absolute error was calculated as the average of the absolute value of actual minus the predicted spherical equivalents of the post-op refractive error. So the biometry gives you a predicted uh, uh, outcome. And then this is actually compared with the actual outcomes to derive the uh, mean absolute error. And if you look at the mean absolute error with the TK and uh, Barrett uh, Universal 2, the average error was 0.48. With the EKR and Holiday 2, it was uh, 0.72. And with the Barrett Rook, it was 0.74. So all the three formulae performed well, but the, we found that the TK with the Universal 2 was slightly better. The advantages of the TK are there is no reliance on the pre-op history. So even if you don't have the pre-op uh, details, you can just do the biometry like you do for all other patients. Uh, you objectively measure the actual values, the posterior curvature, and uh, you use the new generation IUL formula for predict prediction of ELP which is the Barrett's uh, TK. So this was uh, this is the first uh, study co comparing TK with other uh, established formula, post-refractive eyes. And uh, as you can see, all formula uh, performed well. Uh, total characterometry with Barrett TK provided uh, comparatively better predictable outcomes. But of course, we need larger data to further establish this. And uh, now there is a new formula called uh, True K TK, the Barrett True K TK, where he has incorporated uh, both the True K and the TK. It is not available right now on the IOL Master 700, but uh, you can probably uh, go uh, go to the website and then uh, do the calculation, and that is supposed to give the uh, best results uh, and predictability. But uh, what you all all have to understand is uh, uh, you'll have to. Uh, find out the need of the patient and uh, counseling is critical to avoid dissatisfaction in patients with uh, prior refractive surgery because you can always get uh, some amount of refractive surprises and you should be very careful while using premium IOLs. Thank you.